The Prius has been the car to be seen in since it was launched in 2000. Every trendy Hollywood celebrity has driven one and so I was as excited as a really excited person who was excited at being excited when this arrived. But then I drove it and after my first day with the car I had but one burning question. Tom Hanks, Cameron Diaz, Leo DiCaprio, have any of you ever actually visited planet Earth? The VVTi engine replaces the earlier 1.5 version, but it's still obviously built for economy. On a large hill in eco mode, you pass pedestrians at about 23 miles an hour, with all the poise and grace of a pensioner with rampant flatulence. So you're sitting there with the engine screaming, and you're only doing 33 miles per hour because that is the speed that this car is comfortable with. Then, just when you think things can't get any worse, they do. Because you realise that an awful lot of that fuss and palaver was your own fault. The Prius has three drive modes which can be selected manually. EV mode, Eco mode and Power mode. EV mode allows the car to be driven entirely on the battery at speeds below 31 miles per hour for around 1.6 miles. Eco mode reduces the car's throttle response and controls air conditioning to support better fuel economy. And power mode modifies the throttle response by up to 25%, boosting power to aid acceleration. Where I'd gone wrong was leaving the car in eco mode, which created a very convincing illusion that I'd trapped a miniature poodle under the accelerator pedal. A good flex of my right foot produced very little acceleration, but an awful lot of painful noise. This small power to noise ratio did however encourage me to be gentle and therefore more frugal, even if only by virtue of the fact that I was trying to avoid embarrassment. Either way, it did its job, and once I'd put the car into the correct mode, I actually discovered that the Prius felt much perkier than hybrid rivals such as the Honda Insight. So, with hindsight, Tom, Leo and Cameron, I take it all back. My bad. Sorry. This particular car is the top of the range T-Spirit in White Pearl, and it comes with features such as the sat-nav, parking sensors, and a reversing camera as standard. It also features the world's first solar-powered ventilation and air conditioning system. The new 1.8 litre in the Mark III Prius increases power by 24% to 134 brake horsepower. Now this might not sound particularly staggering, but it makes motorway cruising much more relaxing because the engine no longer buzzes like an overworked microwave in a chip shop. Wind and road noise are never a problem either, and running on electric power at low speeds produces virtually silent progress. Running normally, the electric motor still pitches in with drive when needed, but reverses itself under braking to act as a generator and recharge the battery. This has always been a good system, but it's now more efficient than ever. The list of enhancements and new technology on the third generation model is extensive and Toyota claims that almost 90% of the car's components have been redesigned. The latest car is a full hybrid with a 0-62 time of 10.4 seconds and an extended range of around 680 miles. Although the Prius's technology may grab all the media attention, it's still worth remembering that this is a fair-sized family vehicle with enough space for four decent-sized adults to spread out in relative comfort. There are plenty of storage compartments throughout the cabin, with a very large boot and extra storage space hidden under the floor. 
The Prius also copes well with carrying five people because the cabin has impressive head and leg room, with a flat floor in the back. As a result, even middle seat passengers have somewhere to put their feet. But the most obvious improvement isn't the car's space or its new gadgets for that matter. No, it's the way it looks. Yes, the Prius is now almost sporty, with deeper bumpers and sleek new headlights. Inside, there's a new Space Age-style dashboard with a floating centre console, plus a head-up display that projects driver information onto the windscreen. It may not be fast, but it really is a very cool driving experience, in a sort of techno-geek, eco-warrior kind of way. The huge display on top of the dash gives you so much information that it could probably read your fortune. But for something so complex, it's impressively clear, with large graphics that tell you everything from your levels and pressures to the way the drivetrain is operating. Sadly, the velour seats and dull grey dashboard do detract from the experience a little because they make the Prius's cabin feel rather drab. And there are other downsides. The foot-operated parking brake is a bit of a pain to find and rear visibility is, well, pretty pants thanks to the whopping great spoiler that runs across the back window. On the road, the Prius is by no means the most exciting car in the world, but it handles fairly well. It's composed on most surfaces and body roll is well controlled. It also feels solid on the motorway and is reasonably refined at a steady 70 miles per hour. On winding country roads, however, any amount of enthusiastic driving will undoubtedly bring out the car's inevitable understeer. But let's face it, most Prius drivers are unlikely to ever travel quickly enough to find it a problem. So the Prius isn't perfect, and it's now being caught up by a growing range of very clever alternatives. It is, however, a well-established model that buyers know they can trust. The most important thing is that it will save you a packet if you drive it properly, and you should be able to average as much as 72 miles per gallon if you keep it in poodle mode. So once you've learned how to drive it, read the instruments and play the eco game, it's actually a decent, comfortable, practical car. It's also the best looking Prius ever. Therefore, until EVs become more mainstream, this car is likely to hold its place towards the top of the eco-friendly market.